Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Well, it's time to do another club comparison. This time it is going to be Titleist. So Titleist's turn at our ultimate club comparison, comparing six of Titleist's models that are currently in line. So those six models that we will be testing today is the Titleist T100, T100S, T200, T300, T400, and the 620CB. So there is a wide range in loft between these six models. The Titleist 620CB has got 35 degrees of loft on it, while the Titleist T400 has 26 degrees of loft on it. So I do expect this to be quite the range to explain the differences between why you should be playing a more forgiving model or why you should be playing a little bit more workable iron set here as well. Um, so for today's test, I'm going to hit five shots with each model. I'm going to swing about the exact same swing speed as, I, as close as I can to make this as completely unbiased between these models. We're gonna hit with the tightest Probably one X golf ball with a silver dot face up. And I'm really excited to just explain the differences between these models and explain which tightest iron set that you should be playing. Um, so I'm really excited to test that. Before we hit some shots, I do ask if you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that red subscription button down the bottom if you haven't done, haven't done so already. And also comment and like if you can. Let's get after it and hit some golf shots with these tightest irons. So the first club we're head we're gonna start with today is the Titleist T300. This seven iron has 29 degrees of loft. So just as a reminder, when I'm testing today, I'm also gonna be testing with the Project X LZ 6.5 golf shaft. That is the golf shaft that I play in my seven iron. So we're going to hit with this same golf shaft for all club heads. So the first five shots with the Titleist T300. The last swing I did just jump on a little bit, you'll notice my club speed to jump from 88 to 89.5. You'll notice that that white dot is flashing a little bit over there to the left. So I had a little pull, jumped on that a little bit too much. But those other four shots were exceptionally good. They're hovering right around about that 200 yard mark. We're talking within, uh, they're within kind of three or four yards of each other there. So very, very impressed with the consistency with this particular club. Speaking of the Titleist T300, I mentioned it's got 29 degrees of loft on it. So I did hit it pretty far. So it was carrying just shy of 200 yards. Uh, the offset on this, when I'm looking down at it, you can see a decent amount of offset. It's it's got a relatively big top line on the top there, so it inspires confidence for players needing a little more game improvement there as well. We did notice I was able to hit this shot fairly high. So if we scroll over to the right here, you can see about 115 feet in the air and nice and consistent every single time there too. So between 111 and 117 feet. So the consistency was awesome with this particular model. With it having 29 degrees of loft on it, we'll notice the spin rate for me was a little bit on the, on the lower side, so around about 4,500. I would expect this to be towards the kind of the bottom end of the spin rates of the irons that we test today. So up next is the Titleist 620 CB. This is gonna be the most workable iron that we are testing today. It has 35 degrees of loft on it. There is also the 620 MB. It has the exact same specs as the CB and I don't happen to have the fitting edge so that's why we don't have the MB in here. 620 CB has got the same specs. It's going to be, as I mentioned, more workable. I'm noticing as I'm looking down at it, it's got a much smaller, thinner top line, a little smaller, little compact head. I'm expecting ability to be able to work the ball, but it may, I may get punished on my missets a little bit.
Okay, five shots with the 620 CB. First thing I'll touch on is feel. Feel is incredibly soft, nice forged feel off the club face. I mean, it looks exceptional to look down at too. I love that thin top line, thinner, thinner sole, smaller club head. I like to know I can work the ball both ways with this particular club here too. But as I mentioned, as I was about to hit this club, there, it, there is, I did get a little bit punished. Um, no, okay. As I mentioned earlier, I might get punished on a miss hit. So the fourth shot that I just hit with this, we'll notice that yellow dot that's kind of flashing down the right there, that was shot number nine on the left here. You can see how my carry distance dropped by about 16 or 17 yards because I didn't quite catch it perfect. So that was a miss hit for me. That was when I got a little bit heavy. We'll notice my club speed on that particular shot was the exact same as my average club speed, but I dropped about almost 10 miles an hour ball speed by catching this one a little bit heavy. So the forgiveness level of the 620 BB, BB <laughs> the forgiveness level of the 620 CB is not going to be as good as your more game improvement iron. So it's important to talk with a fitter to make sure that you fit into the perfect iron. Don't get me wrong, these things look awesome. On the great shots, you're gonna hit some great shots. You'll notice the other four shots that I hit, very, very close together. The consistency on those were very, very consistent. But when I miss hit it, notice the height drop by about, that's about 20 feet, just a little over 20 feet in the air, um, and my distance dropped there as well. So got punished a little bit by the miss hit, but the other four shots were exceptionally good. Uh, we talk about the loft difference. So this club has 35 degrees of loft on it, where the club before I has 29. We take a look at the spin. So we went, we basically increased about 1300 RPMs of spin by playing a club that's got a little bit more loft on it. And also you'll notice the distance. Now the four shots that I hit well, where they were hovering around about 178 on average with the exception of that miss hit. You can see how I was carrying the T300 about 199. So it was about 20 yards less with the Titleist 620 CB. Next up is the Titleist T100. Still, still a workable iron in a slightly more forgiving package compared to the 620 CB. Still definitely more of a player's iron though for sure. Okay, so the Titleist T100, it's got 34 degrees of loft on it, so it's still going to be a similar distance to what I was hitting the 620 CB, maybe about three or four yards further overall uh, on, the, on the better shots, because you'll notice with the 620 CB, I had that one miss that, that brought down the, the, the average a little bit there. But interesting, when I hit a miss hit with the T100, and that was the third shot, that was shot 13 there, will notice how my ball speed only dropped by about three miles an hour compared to the other shots that I hit. So the level of forgiveness with this particular model is better versus say the, the 620 CB where I got punished a little bit more for, for a miss it there as well. Because this club has a, still has 34 degrees of loft on it, so towards the higher loft of all the irons we're testing here today, the spin rate's still gonna be a little on the higher side comparing them, so it's about 54, 50 on average with regards to spin. I love that the spin was pretty consistent in that area there as well. So we'll notice the lowest spin was 52, to the highest spin was 56. So we're kind of right in the ballpark for how, what my spin rate's been with a seven iron recently. I also play with a seven iron that's got 34 degrees of loft. So these are very, very similar numbers across the board. I normally carry the ball about 180, 182. On average there, I was carrying at 181.9. So very, very consistent numbers across the board. Um, the big difference is it's just got a little bit more forgiveness than the 620 CB, 
but the loft is still on the higher side compared to, for example, the T300, the first club we hit, and that's why you will notice, if you look over on the right side, that the T300 is still further up the, uh, up the fairway per se. So speaking of loft, so the exciting thing with Titleist is they have a T100S. So the next club I want to hit is the T100S. It's in a slightly smaller package, but it's got a little bit stronger loft to it. So it's got a couple of degrees less loft than the T100. But before I do hit the T100S, I just want to touch on the workability with the T100. It had the, the Thomas Campbell, I guess the Thomas Campbell pattern shot, that gentle little draw that I like to hit every single time. So I loved the workability with that little bit of a draw with the T100. So I've got the T100S, which I'm going to hit next. As I mentioned, the loft's a little stronger, so I do expect this to spin a little bit less than the T100 and probably go about five or six yards further than the T100. So I'm looking for this probably around about 188 to 190. Well, that was actually a pretty good guess. Uh, I mentioned I would expect this club to spin just a little bit less than the T100. We'll notice the spin rate difference went from 54.50 down to 51.50. It's because there's two degrees less loft on this club. I also mentioned 188 to 190 on average, I'd expect. Well, the first swing I hit, I did jump on it a little bit, had a little faster club speed, went 193. But you can notice how we're ranging here from 187 to 193. So on average, 189.8. That was a pretty, pretty good guess, knowing that this club's got two degrees less loft on it. It is relatively forgiving as well. You'll notice I had one shot in there. I think the ball speed dropped to 126.8, but it still went 187. So it was relatively forgiving as well. So my miss hits, I got away with it as well. Uh, very good looking club, looks very, very similar to the T100 looking down at. The only kind of difference I notice is about two degrees less loft. It does have maybe ever so slightly larger sole, but it's basically a smaller package of the T100. It also had that gentle little draw that I like to hit. So if you take a look over on the right side, that's that blue circle. You can see how that was just kind of just a little bit left of center, uh, showing my nice little draw that I like to hit. So the T100S would be a great option for a player that likes to play a player's looking iron, but spins the ball a lot. It's got a little bit of forgiveness in there extra, but if you have a steeper attack angle, if you slice the ball, if you spin the ball a lot, the T100S is definitely a good solution to bring that spin rate down and provide you with a little bit more ball speed. Speaking of ball speed, we've, we've got the big puppy here right now. This is the Titleist T400. It's got 26 degrees of loft on it. So this is for a player, it's a game improvement iron for a player where their dynamic loft, where they may have a hard time compressing the ball. So less loft is going to then put them in the ideal launch and spin for where a seven iron should be. So yes, when I'm hitting this, it's going to go far. I, for no reason, should play this particular model, but I'm going to just show you the distance that you can pick up by playing a club that's got a little less loft and also the forgiveness level of the T400. That was hit good. So I want to first begin with the, talking about me trying to swing the same speed for every single club. So this club head feels lighter, even though it's the exact same golf shaft we're testing with. 
So the first swing that I hit, you'll notice this club speed was about 87.7. That was me really feeling like I had to slow it down to try and make my swing speed the same. And then the next three swings, I was like, you know what? Let's just swing the exact same swing that you've been doing on all, all, these, all the other clubs. You notice what happened. My club speed was a little bit over 90 miles an hour. So I really kind of picked up two miles an hour of club speed with this particular model because the club head's a little bit lighter. You can see the first shot and the last shot, those were definitely my miss hits. You can see the ball speed numbers on those dropped by about six or seven miles an hour. But notice how they still carried over 200 yards. So they still carried over 200 yards, which is further than the best shot that I hit with any other club so far. So we can see that because the loft on this club is stronger, it's going to go further for sure. So 130, about 136 mile an hour ball speed on my good shots with the T400. The launch angle was a little bit lower because there is less loft on the golf club. The spin rate was definitely a lot lower. So we notice the spin rate dropped to about 30, 3,900 there on average. Once again, that's to do with the loft on the club. So I talked about like the T100S that fits a player that maybe has a little steeper attack angle um, to bring the spin rate down. Well, this is definitely a great option for that player that definitely needs to reduce spin, but needs to get the ball to go a little bit further there as well. So if you don't compress the ball, so if at impact the club's a little bit behind, what's gonna happen is the ball's gonna get up in there and spin a lot, lot more. So the T400 is definitely a good option for your kind of your, your max game improvement player, someone that needs a little extra help with their golf swing. So T400 definitely goes a lot further than other particular models there as well. So interesting, quite far, about 212 was my carry distance on my shots that I hit struck well. So the one other thing I want to touch on with the T400 is the curve. So normally I like to play that drawer. So we look at the T100S, for example, that's right below. Notice my average curve was 34 feet to the left. It's curving left every single time. If we took a look at the T400, you can see well, I had three shots there with curve of six feet of, or less with that particular shot. I actually had one shot there where the curve was zero. So it had no curve right to left. And that's in feet, that's not yards. So on average, it definitely curved a lot to the left. It really just flew dead straight. And you can kind of see up on the screen here, these three orange dots basically going dead straight right down the middle on those really well struck golf shots. And finally, the Titleist T200. So the T200 is going to look pretty similar to the T100 and the T100S. I do expect this to go just a little bit further and spin just a little bit less because the loft of it is at 30 degrees. So the T200 really fits in nicely between like the T100S and the T100 and the T300. So we take a look over here on the right, you can see the blue circle, that was the T100S. That club's got 32 degrees of loft on it. We look at the white circle, that's the T300, that one has 29 degrees of loft on it. And then we have the T200. That one's got 30 degrees of loft on it. Notice how it's split right between the T100S and the T300. So it's kind of like an in-betweener. The T300 is a little more game improvement iron, where the T100S is slightly kind of towards the, the player's iron. The T200 fits into your player's distance iron category because the loft's a little bit stronger. The way it's designed, the center of gravity, it's gonna spin a little bit less. It's gonna go just a little bit further for our players that need to pick up a little bit distance there as well. So I mentioned a little bit less spin, so it's spinning about 4,700. And we'll take a look at all the numbers and compare all the differences across the board. But I think the biggest, most important thing with this one is how 
consistent it was every single time with the spin. So we'll notice plus or minus 45 with consistency. A little bit less spin, so once again, a model for a player that needs to spin the ball a little bit less or to hit the ball a little further. But I love that consistency, so that really impressed me there as well. We'll notice the carry distance there was, even though the ball was going quite a bit further, this carry distance consistency was, consistency was quite impressive there as well. So next I'm going to break down the numbers a little bit more. I'm going to take a look at the averages across the board, and then I'm going to explain kind of what the differences between each model. So let's take a look, dive a little deeper into the numbers here. So the first thing we look at is club speed. So notice I tried to really swing the same speed with every single club. We have a range from 88.2 to 88.5 with five of the six models. I mentioned with the T400, the club head felt a little bit lighter, and that's why my club speed was just a little bit faster. I had a hard time slowing myself down a little bit. I tried to, and I had to miss it in there, so I just I was like, you know, just swing just like you normally would with the other clubs, but you notice how the club speed was a little bit faster, and that's the club head design just being a little bit lighter there as well. So I did a good job across the board with the exception of T400, but that was really hard for me to do to try and slow my swing speed to have the exact same speed across the board. So ball speed, if we look at ball speed here next, the, if we look at the T400 because that particular model had 26 degrees of loft on it, it had the highest ball speed. So that one was definitely going to go the furthest because it had less loft on it. If we look across the board here, the T300, would be the next club, it's got 29 degrees of loft on it, so that had 131.2. The T200's got 30 degrees of loft on it, that went 128.5. The T100S has got 32 degrees of loft, 128.3. The T100's got 34 degrees of loft, 125.0. And the 620CB's got 35 degrees of loft, 122. So the exact trend I would expect from the club that's got the least amount of loft to the highest amount of loft, so from the highest amount of ball speed to the lowest amount of ball speed there across the board. So I'm interested to see if that same trend is the same with spin rate. So if we look at spin rate, so we'll work from more of a player's iron to the more game improvement iron and see if we see the exact same trend. So the 620CB, the mo most player's iron, has got 5,800 RPMs of spin on it. The T100, which would be the next, because it's got 34 degrees of loft on it, 54.50. The T100S, very similar looking club, but it's got two degrees less loft on it, 51.50. The tight, this T200 now has another two degrees less loft, so it's got 30 degrees of loft on it, it's 4,700. The T300's got 29 degrees of loft, it's got 4,500, and the T400 has definitely got a little less loft on it at 3,800. So the exact same trend. So essentially what I'm saying is the least amount of loft you have on a club, the higher the ball speed, the lower the spin. The highest amount of loft, so your more player's irons are going to have the least amount of ball speed, but they're going to have the highest amount of spin. So it's important to work with a fitter to make sure what spin rate category you should be in, because we don't want to fit you into an iron that all of a sudden spins way less, and all of a sudden you hit the ball much lower, and the ball doesn't stay up in the air, because what's going to happen is your stopping power is going to be compromised. So we need to pay attention to your landing angle and the height that you hit that particular club to make sure we get you in the right windows across the board there as well. Same thing you'll notice across the board if we look at trends, uh, carry distance, the 620CB, and I'm not, I'm not going to go through every single one, but we can kind of see how, if we work from the top to the bottom, notice how there's a trend. The club with the most amount of loft is going to go the shortest distance. The club with the least amount of loft is going to go the longest distance there too. So loft is definitely a huge influence across the board there too. Uh, I would also expect dynamic loft to kind of follow that same trend because the amount of loft that you present it impact on that particular club. So I mentioned kind of dynamic loft a little bit earlier in the video. Mench talked about compression. If a player doesn't compress the ball very well, it's important to try and get them into kind of the optimal window by fitting them into an iron that maybe has a little less loft on it or someone really compresses the ball well, for example, myself, 
I'm never going to play a game improvement iron because I don't want my 7 iron to go 215 yards is kind of how far it was going there with the T400 there. So important to work with a fitter, pay attention to your swing dynamics and also kind of the, the ball, ball numbers as well. The height on all the irons were ranging from about 102 feet in the air to about 115 feet in the air, so a slight difference across the board with, with those. As I mentioned, pay attention to that landing angle. So a, a lot of iron fittings, if that landing angle starts getting kind of below 45 degrees, then you might want to play a, play a club that's got a little more loft on it to get the ball up in the air. So we noticed the T400, for example, I was slightly below what I would recommend at 44. I would want to play any one of these other irons that give me a landing angle about 45 degrees. Now, if I had less club speed, so if a player came in and had less club speed and that landing angle was lower, we would make sure we fit you something that's going to give you a little more height and definitely a little more spin to give you a chance to stop the ball on the green. And then finally, dispersion is very, very important. Uh, so if we look at the dispersion patterns across the board here, you can see the trends now with regards to kind of your, your distance. The 620 CB is that, that yellow circle. You can see how I had four really good shots that were pretty close to the middle, but then I got punished on that one miss hit. So that's why that circle is a lot larger. So that's why I wouldn't always fit everyone into a 620 CB because I want them to enjoy the golf game. I want them to enjoy their miss hits as well. If we go to the top end, we can see the T400's got the least amount of loft. It was definitely going the furthest. Um, one thing I did notice is the Titleist T100, so that's the purple circle. I like to hit a slight little drawer. Notice how it was just slightly left of center, but it was this nice small circle here as well. I have, so the Titleist T100 got replaced by the, so the Titleist T100 replaced the AP2 a couple years ago, and I actually played the AP2 irons for a, for a year or two there as well. So it fit into an iron that I like to play. I'm kind of very much borderline between a player's blade or something that's got a slightly more forgiveness there too. So I would fit myself into something along those lines where I don't need to hit the ball crazy far and spin the ball less. So important to note, just loft is a big influence, but also you've got to pay attention to where you're hitting the golf ball. We want to hit it further offline. We don't want to hit the ball too low. We don't want to hit the ball too high. So it's important to work with a club fitter to assess which tightless iron that you fit into. So we analyzed six different tightless irons here today. There's quite the range between them. So there's your max game improvement irons. There is your complete kind of player's irons. So there's quite the range. So make sure you come in to Second Swing to work with a club fitter or talk with someone online with our online sales and service team. We would love to help you out to improve your golf game and get you fit into tightless irons. Also, keep in mind, if these new tightless irons outperform your current irons, bring those in. We do accept trades and it's a great way for you to help offset the prices on new clubs. And then also, Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We've got plenty more great content coming your way in the future.